I've experienced that in my own practice where uh, patients or, or clients will come to me and they're not sure that they have the diagnosis and then they're not sure about treatment. Can you explain how MS is treated uh, and what relationship, if there is any, between the diagnosis and the nature of the treatment? In other words, we know that people have like relapsing remitting mm-hmm. uh, MS, they have progressive MS. So can you explain the treatment uh, modalities for us? Absolutely. Um, and, and thank you, by the way, for touching on the different categories of MS. Uh, I want everyone as as much as you're able to try to do away with those categories in your mind. Um, so what we're learning more and more about MS is that is it is a spectrum of disease, it's a continuum, and you can fall anywhere along that continuum in terms of how relapsing and how remitting versus how progressive. Um, and so they're not strict categories anymore. We're trying to move away from that in general um, in the medical field and in the research side of things. Um, depending on where you fall along that that continuum, the treatment does certainly matter. So somebody with what we call benign MS, and this is very, very few people, maybe only 5% or less of people with benign MS, uh, may only have one or two relapses and they completely remit. uh, And then they are perfectly back to normal. And then the the rest of their lives are fine. Uh, Versus on the other end of the spectrum, again, we see that, you know, complete opposite, um, where somebody just has progression from the very beginning. They don't really have these clear attacks um, called relapses that other people experience. And very quickly, in in fact, within a few years, they can get to the point where they are extremely disabled and and confined to a wheelchair. Um, So that's, again, how variable the disease is. And so depending on where along the spectrum your MS may land, the treatment will be very different. Um, So in general, uh, and I, I try to tell uh, people that there are essentially two pillars of treatment for the disease. The first is the uh, symptomatic treatment. And so well, that's all the medications that we use to try to uh, fix the symptoms that MS already caused to your body. Um, so and you can be on six different of these at, ones of these at, uh, at once. So you can be on uh Amantadine for your fatigue, mirbetric for your bladder. Um, you can be on gabapentin for your pain and ampura for your walking. And that might be the first pillar, the symptomatic treatment. Um, in parallel with that, we have to have a second pillar because if not, the, the structure crumbles. Um, and that second pillar is the disease modifying therapy. So that um, really depends on where you are on that spectrum of, of uh uh, disease severity um, with respect to what we use, but there's only one at a time. We use one at a time disease modifying therapy. Um, and that is to change the course of the disease and to prevent more disease from happening. So if you don't use both pillars in, in parallel with each other, you, you can't uh, you know fix what's currently going on and prevent more things from happening. Well, that's a great way to explain it. I like the, the concept of the pillars. That's neat. Thank you. Um, what are the three most common questions that you get from your patients? Right. So uh, certainly the one that comes up the most often, and this is regardless of, uh, you know, the phenotype of the MS that someone might be experiencing, uh, people are worried about how disabled they will be. Um, and, you know, and this uh, speaks back to what we traditionally know about MS, uh, that is unpredictable and that it can lead to severe severe disease. Um, and so whether somebody's newly diagnosed or whether someone's had MS for 30 years, they still wanna know what their future is going to look like and what their functional capacity will be. So a lot of discussion centers around that. Um, and then other than that, uh, I guess the second most question would be second most common question would be uh, is the treatment going to be worse than the disease? And that's a very <laughs> fair question because some of these medications are scary, but in general the answer is no. Um, so that there's your answer for that. The treatment is not worse than the disease. Please get on a treatment. Uh, and then the the third common one probably being um, you know what can I do about the most common symptoms, usually being fatigue and cognitive dysfunction. So those are t- two of the ones that come up the most often, um, and they want to know what they can do about those, um, because if you can reverse those, people can really get their quality of life back. And so what's the answer to that third question? Medications. No, I'm just kidding. Um, We do have a couple uh, uh, medications that can help, Um, but uh, uh, one thing that I wish people would ask me more often is, um, you know, what else can I do besides medicines to help with my fatigue? What else can I do um, besides medications to help with my cognitive dysfunction? There's there's quite a bit, actually. Um, uh, the most important ones being uh, diet, 
uh, an exercise. So it sounds very uh, run of the mill when you're talking to any physician in any field, but it's actually true. So there's a, been a lot of research going into the gut microbiome and how your diet influences your immune system and therefore the course of your MS and the degree of cognitive and, and physical disability that somebody might accumulate. So the diet's very important as is exercise. So, Well, that leads me to my next question. And that is, what are the three questions that you wish a patient would ask you, but they don't ask you? Yeah, I, I really um, wish that when we were having a discussion, um, you know, usually it has to do with symptoms or about treatment, but what often gets overlooked is their disability application. Um, oftentimes somebody won't even mention to me that they're applying for disability. And then we might just get forms all of a sudden to fill out. And if I had known that you were applying for disability um, or that you were you already had um, an application open, uh, then I would have been able to have a, a much better um, discussion with you during your visit to be able to fill these forms out in a way that can help your, your claim. Um, so I, I wish uh, patients would bring that up to me more often. You know, I'm thinking about applying for disability, um, what what can you do to help me with that? Uh, so please ask me that. <laughs> so how about the other two questions that you wish people would oh. ask? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Patients ask a lot of questions. <laughs> so I'm not sure that there are any others that uh, really come up. Uh, Patients with MS are usually very, very well read. Um, they do a lot of their own research. They're online all the time. They're on blogs. And so they're usually the ones coming to me with the questions. Uh, I can't think of too many others that uh, I wish would be uh, tied in to the, to the conversation. I think they already happen. I'm going to throw you a hardball question. Uh, and that is, um, there are a number of support groups out in the community where, as you know, very active in the MS support uh, groups and their walks. Um, to what extent uh, do you think that patients should be involved in support groups like uh, the MS Society or the local support groups that uh, and chat lines that you'll see? One hundred percent across the board. Um, it it will not only help um, you know your your fellow person with MS, um, but it'll help you in so many ways that you can't even understand the the knowledge that a physician can impart to you during a visit is, is limited uh, by our medical background. When you're part of a support group, uh, you can talk with other people with MS who go through similar experiences as you, and they have often so many solutions to the very problems that you have been trying to combat and things that we can't even think of. Uh, and and uh, it could be as simple as, you know, how to go about doing something during your daily routine where, of course, we've never had to do that before with, with MS. And so how could we possibly come up with a solution for you? Um, so support groups are incredibly important. Not only that, uh, in terms of, you know, finding little tips and tricks for yourself, they're, they're healthy um, mentally and emotionally to be able to connect with other people um, that are going through what you're going through versus, you know, your friends and your family who don't have MS that they empathize with you and they want to help you, but they really just don't know how. Um, so support groups are um, tremendously helpful for, for, for various reasons. 